Welcome back to episode 5 of Mechanical Animation. Today I'm going to show you how to work with the link constraint controller, how to place it on objects and how to uh, animate it over time. So first, what is the problem? Why do we need a link constraint um, com uh, controller? Uh, I'm moving here in Max into a top view and I'm quickly creating uh, a simple scene. I'm going to place two little squares. Let's go into a shaded view and I'm also going to use a cylinder so we have a different shape on our hand. Let's turn off the grid. So the first, the problem is, oh sorry, the problem is uh, when I link an object to another one, for example I'm gonna, this is the parent, the, the, the cylinder and the box is the child. If I select the child and I link it to the parent, it will of course be linked, so when I move the parent, the child will follow. But unfortunately, the, a linking one object to another, which uh, transfers position, rotation and scale to it, is not animatable. So you cannot link and unlink things. For example, if I now link, um, if I want to cancel the linking, I have to use the unlink function but from now on it's not linked anymore so this linking and unlinking cannot be animated that's why we have an extra controller that allows us to link and unlink such an animation so here is what i'm planning to do i'm planning to use a linking i'm gonna uh, link the first box to the cylinder from uh, 0 to 50 and then from 50 to 100, I'm going to link the other one. So uh, I'll show you what, uh, what I'm planning to do. So let's do a quick animation of the, of the cylinder. I'm going to hit Auto key. Uh, I'm going to go from 0 to 40. From here, no, sorry, I'll do a little different. Let's do from 0 to 20. I go from here to here. From 20 to uh, 50, I go from here to here. From 50 to 60, I go from here to there. And from 60 to 100, I go from here down. So that is a really simple animation. Let's quickly play it. So first over, then, oh, you hardly can see it, but there's, those are, there's a stop in between. Um, maybe let's add a stop there, so that at this position there's a brief stop. How can I do this? Um, first of all, I'm going to move this one out five frames. I'm going to take this frame here, which is, stands for the position at this point, and just copy it five frames. It means it stops there for five seconds, uh, for five frames. Stop and continue on. Okay, so very quick animation. And now I'm going to link this first box from 20 to 50, and then drop it, and then fr uh, move over here, and from 60 to 100, I'm going to link this box to my cylinder. So let's show you how that works. So I'm going to start with this one, and uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use a controller, and it's called a link constraint controller. The link constraint controller will be placed uh, onto our object. My personal way to do this, maybe not uh, the best one, but I'm going to show you the way I usually do it. Uh, so I'm going to select the object that I want to link. I'm going to choose animation constraints, link constraint, and now I have a rubber band on it, and I click on anything. When I say anything, uh, it me, uh, it doesn't, it's not necessary where I click it. Why? Because that opens motion over here and it opens the parameters for the link constraint. And what I'm going to do is I am right away deleting this link again. Why? Because I don't want the cylinder to be linked from the very beginning. At the very beginning, I want this object to be linked to nothing. And that is, I'm going to delete the link. And linking it to nothing means link to world. So while I'm still here at zero, I'm going to say link to world. Now I'm moving forward in time and at frame 20, I would like now this object to be linked to this cylinder. So now I'm going to add another link add link, click on the cylinder, and now from frame 20 onward, it's linked to the cylinder. Uh, I'll go forward in time till uh, 
50. At frame 50, it will again, for a pre uh, it will again from that time on, not be linked to anything else anymore. So I'm going to go to frame 50 and choose link to world. So it will stay there and be not linked anymore. Now I go forward in time and now I need a different um, different link here and now I want, want to link this object to my uh, to my cylinder so uh, I'm gonna show you this time I'm gonna show you a little differently so you select the object and instead of going to animation constraint link constraint and so on which I could do right now because um, it, it would be the right frame I'm going to do it differently I'm going uh, right away to motion and find <clears throat> the assign controller, sorry, <clears throat> assign the assign controller, and I'm gonna assign a controller to transform. So I select transform, and here's a little button, assign controller, I'm gonna assign the link constraint by hand. Okay, so it opens up the same, let me close that again, it opens up the same dialog box, only this time is nothing uh, written in here, so I don't have to delete the first one. It's a little bit more, uh, yeah, more straightforward, but uh, I usually prefer the other way around. So I don't need to start with, um, with deleting the link first. I can start right away with link to world. But wait a second, I don't want it to at frame 65. Actually, from the beginning on, it should be linked to the world. So you can also change the time later. So I'm gonna hit start time zero. So now it says zero link to world and now I am at 65. So I add a link to this guy. So now from 65 onward, it's linked to cylinder one. And that is good because now it follows down there. Okay, so let's turn that link on and watch the whole animation from the beginning. So it goes up there, grabs the box, changes location and takes the other one down. Okay, so that was, um, how how I did it in two different methods. The first one, select the object animation constraints and choose the link constraint. And the other one is directly with assign controller to transformation, assign controller link. So that means when you assign it to uh, transformation, the linking will be done to move, rotate and scale. So if I uh, select this one, for example, and uh, oh, okay, not now. Sorry, it's not linked here, but here it's linked. I could also rotate my object and it will follow. Okay, uh, that was a really brief uh, tutorial about link constraint. Uh, what can we use it for? We can use it for all kinds of objects that um, are grabbed. For example, if you want to, uh, you have a hand and it grabs something on the table and puts it on another table. For the moment that it's in the hand, it will be linked to the hand from the time it's put down or you, before you pick it up, it's usually linked to world or it's linked to something else. So this is a way how you can, how you can animate the, uh, the linking. You can link it to dummies or you can link it to any other objects. Okay, uh, try it, go to the internet, find some other tutorials how they do it on different objects. Uh, I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.